What are you? I'm sitting here filming a public meeting. What are you doing? Welcome back to the J Town Press, and today we're talking about the Duval County Public Schools, and I'm going to give you an update on the lawsuit. If you haven't seen the original video, it will be linked in the description and also pinned comments, so go check it out. In this video, I'm going to try to go in as much detail as I can. I'm also going to use this as a learning tool so you guys can see exactly what goes on in a pro se lawsuit. And just remember, I'm not an attorney, so this is not legal advice. This is just my own experience. But just before I jump into the video, here's a little recap of what happened to refresh your memory. Public meeting. Yeah. Yeah, but I think what the, your policy is. I, yeah, I can give you my name. I don't have an ID with me. Yeah, now. I think the policy is you have to have a. Uh, yeah, but this floor, the Florida laws, the law, not the policy says that I'm allowed to attend the meeting. I don't care what your policy says. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you'll know that I'll be unarmed. You're going to scream me, I'm assuming. So I don't understand. I could give you my, my name. Well, you can ask to talk to a higher authority and try to seek one out somewhere. Yeah, I just want to attend staff. the public meeting just like the Florida Law, uh, Act. The Florida sure. Public Meetings Act says right. that I'm allowed to attend. Well, so I'm not sure why you're refusing. Yeah. Well, they've got rules. I don't yeah, care what the rules are. Yeah. We help them enforce those rules. I understand that. Yeah, I just want to but, go to the public meeting. But without that ID, how do you think you can get across there safely into the meeting? Well, you're going to scream me. So what's my name going to provide? Like, what's that going to do? I'm kind of confused. Well, the law doesn't. A valid picture but that's a policy. That's not a law. Yeah. You're a law enforcement, right? Are you a sworn law enforcement? Well, oh yeah. Okay, yes, I just, I'm just curious. Yeah. Just yeah, so I just want to tell you, pardon. I just so I know how, how, how this is yeah, going to go. People kind of school police. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're a sworn Florida officer. Yeah. So you, you you raise your right hand and swear an oath to the Constitution, Florida law, right? I'm just I'm just that's what I was asking. So you're obviously going to know that I'm going to be unarmed. So what's the what's my name going to provide? Well, I don't know how you're going to get in there without the ID. So that's what we're trying to negotiate. Well, I mean, you're going to know that it'll be unarmed. I, the Florida, the Florida Public Meetings will Act says that I'm allowed to go in there to the meeting. So, yeah. this is this policy. I don't care about your policy. I told you I'd give you my name. Yeah, you try to quit pass here. I'm going to put you in handcuffs. Well, I'm telling you right now, I yeah. want access to the building. I would like to go to the public meeting. All right, talk to where you can. Don't, do not don't touch me. Head. Well, I'm, I'm telling you that you can scream me. You got to move over to the side. Well, I would like to go into the public meeting, sir. Why don't you move over to the side. I, I'm trying to get to the public meeting, sir. So, Graham, what do we uh, what do we have with this young lady? What do we have? Uh, yeah, what's her name? Yeah, that's, a that's my press badge. Yeah. Okay. Press. So basically, me, so it's basically what it is, it's called the Florida Public Meetings Act. Yes. So I like to go. And I told your uh, your officer here that I have no problem going through security. Okay. You'll know that I have no weapons. Okay. So I'm not sure what my name's going to provide uh, you other than if you want to put your items here on the table uh -huh. and you can go through security. Okay. Okay. Do okay. that. Like, when is it currently and what should it be? And are we in the right size, so to speak, with that admin square footage with all the properties that we have currently? Yeah, I'm going to have to sit down. I'm gonna okay, and so, just for really clarification, even though it's a reduction in. I'm filming a uh, meeting, sir. Let's go back here and talk. Some direction, you said we were at 105,000 square feet versus 100,000 square feet. So, Go back here. Talk to Tracy, okay? Who's Tracy? Right. He's, right. Over He's over the public media. What's that? He's over the public media. So go back here and talk. I'm just getting the public media, sir. Listen. Why are you following so our to me? Follow our directions, okay? I don't need to. It's a public okay. space, sir. It's a public meeting. It's a public space. It's a public, it's a public okay. meeting, sir. You're not yes. going to believe me. But you're going to sit You're getting out. way too close. Can we get. Let's have a lead. You're the one who's driving her. Let's have a lead. Sir, what are you doing? What are you doing, sir? What are you doing? What are you, can you let me go? What are you doing? What are you, Jesus! What are you doing, sir? What are you? I'm sitting here filming the public meeting. What are you doing? Why are you grabbing me like this? Why are you grabbing me like this? Let me go. Get off of me, sir. Get off. Stop. What the hell are you doing, sir? What in the yeah. world? I was sitting there filming a public meeting, sir. And a, and a public you. trying to come back here again in this building. You'll be arrested for trespassing. I'm going to start this video off right where I left off on the last one. If you have not seen it, it will be linked in the description and the pinned comment. Go check it out. So let's jump right into it. The defendant's attorney filed a motion to dismiss. And of course, I filed my response to the defendant's motion to dismiss. We then had a status meeting between the magistrate judge, myself, and the defendant's attorney. A few things came out of this status meeting. The biggest of which it says defendant's amended motion 
motion to dismiss complaint with prejudice is denied without prejudice. Now this doesn't necessarily mean that I beat the motion to dismiss. The defendant's attorney stated that they did not receive exhibit one, which is the video of what happened. Of course, when I got the motion to dismiss, I immediately sent out another thumb drive with the video. During the status meeting, the defendant's attorney said that he had received it. And assumably, instead of going back and forth, the judge just denied the motion and told the defendant's attorney if he would like to, he can resubmit another motion to dismiss, but make sure that he makes references to exhibit one. And again, they filed another motion to dismiss. They state that my complaint is frivolous, legally deficient, procedurally defective, and fails to state a claim for relief. They go on to state such things as the complaint does not meet federal pleading standards, and the complaint does not state a claim for relief. And of course, the one they fall on all the time, the defendants are entitled to qualified immunity, which in a nutshell basically states that they can claim ignorance for not knowing the law when they violate it. And as a non-government employee, I implore you to try to use that same excuse, ignorance of the law, if you ever get charged with a crime. See how well it works out for you. Next, it says there is no claim based on the YouTube video. They go on to say that police officers are entitled to keep their identifying personal information private under Florida law 119.0714D2A. Well, let's take a look at it. We look at 2A and you see right here at the bottom it says basically all this is from Florida statute 119.071 and S24A article 1 of the state constitution which Florida statute chapter 119 and also article 1 of the Florida constitution section 24A has to do with public records requests. Yeah, I don't see the relevance either. Florida is in the 11th circuit and a well-known case law called Smith v. City of Cumming says that we have the right to record government officials in their official capacity. Mills v. Alabama gathering info about government officials in a form that can be disseminated to others serves as a cardinal first amendment interest in protecting and promoting the free discussion of governmental affairs. Next, Gentile v. State of Nevada recognizes a core first amendment interest in the dissemination of information relating to alleged governmental misconduct. And the last part of this, it says, there are currently two videos on YouTube of the events at issue with plenty of commentary from the plaintiff who posted the videos. Well, yeah, once the lawsuit was filed, I'm sure the attorney said, don't put any more privacy complaints. Admission of guilt, perhaps? And of course, I filed off my response to the defendant's motion to dismiss with prejudice. And of course, I make sure to hit all the points in the defendant's motion to dismiss. And most importantly, the qualified immunity. Where I state, qualified immunity is available only to those who have not violated a clearly established right. However, the right to free press, also known as the right to gather information, specifically about public employees dealing in matters of public interest, is a well-established right. As you see, I quote Mills v. Alabama from 1966. Then I go on to say, as well it is a well-established right to attend a public school board meeting without providing identification. And you can clearly see See here in AGO 2005-13, it clearly states, City may not require persons wishing to attend public meetings to provide identification as a condition of attendance. And also it states, the term public means the people as a whole, and that the phrase open to the public means open to all persons who choose to attend. Something that I haven't gone over on my channel, and if I have, it probably needs to be heard again, something that I included in my complaint. The loss of First Amendment freedoms for even minimal periods of time unquestionably constitutes irreparable injury. Elrod V. Burns. And one last thing that I'll go over has to do with the YouTube privacy complaints. I will read through this and you guys can go do some research on your own. A simple search. You should easily be able to find it. Having my news report removed by filing a privacy complaint when working as a public employee with no expectation of privacy is a form of prior restraint known as subsequent punishment. Having my video removed is no different than buying all the copies of the paper in order to prevent the story from reaching the public. As prior restraint, by contrast and by definition, has an immediate and irreversible sanction. If it can be said that a threat of criminal or civil sanctions after publication chills speech, prior restraint freezes it at least for the time. Nebraska Press Association v. Stewart. Go look it up.
I have just filed my response to the defendant's motion to dismiss today, and I'm currently waiting on the judge's decision. I will keep you guys posted and let y'all know what happens with this case. Always make sure you like, share, and subscribe. It really helps out the algorithm. Everything will be found in the description and the pinned comment. And if you have a story to tell J-Town, contact me at the J-Town Press at gmail.com. And most importantly, J-Town March is here. Go check it out. The freedom of the press is one of the greatest bulwarks of liberty and can never be restrained but by despotic governments.